just answer the questions. Okay, cool. All right, so first question is, when did you first realize your passion for boxing? You know, I was pretty much born into it. So I had a brother, he was boxing, he's around 10 years older than me. Uh, he was like a child prodigy, so my dad would train him, he would take me to the gym with him. So, you know, it would be like after school. So I run around, hit the bag, and I was like, yo, this is a, a cool thing. So me growing up, I thought that everybody grows up to be a boxer, so. <laughs> Okay. All right, so who would you say is your biggest inspiration in your life? My, uh, in, in my life, you know, I have to say, you know, my Lord and Savior, you know, Jesus Christ, above uh, above anyone. But, you know, um, another person that was a big inspiration to me was uh, Zab Judah. So I would grow up watching Zab, you know, win titles and everything. I'd be around him in the gym a lot. So I didn't watch any other sports. So basically, uh, to me, he was like, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant. So kids at school would be like, oh, you see that game, you know, with Kobe? And I'd be like, oh, you saw the fight with Zab? So I didn't even know who Kobe Bryant was. I knew who Zab was first, so that's how it was for me. So speaking of Zab, uh -huh. your trainer yeah. is Yoel Judah. How did, how did that come about? Uh, well, my father and Yoel were very close. And, um, you know, basically my dad, you know, he was, my brother was around Zab, one of his main main sparring partners that work very close together. So, uh, you know, my dad, he passed away three years ago. And uh, he also was extreme inspiration to me. And he built, he put the confidence into me, put the skill set into me up until, you know, about age 19, he died when I was around 20, I was 23. So even then he was putting a lot into me, talking about boxing and everything like that. Uh, instilling in me different techniques. And, uh, you know, now, you know, your wall has taken over, but he, uh, every day I think about him. And uh, he, you know, without my father, you know, I should have said that, you know, even before anybody, he was really, really my biggest inspiration, even to today. All right. So finish this, finish this sentence for me. Okay. If it wasn't for boxing, I would be? Uh, if it wasn't for boxing, oh, wow, I think I'd probably be an actor. <laughs> I think I'd probably be an actor or uh, maybe a, I don't know, maybe a rapper or something. <laughs> that seems pretty fun, too. So I'll probably be doing that. All right. So what is the biggest hurdle you had to overcome in your journey of boxing? Uh, me is getting, is uh, trying to, a lot of times when you look up to people, like I looked up to Zab, and right now I'm signed to Vander Holyfield. I looked up to my brother. So a lot of issues were if my life didn't fall in exactly their path, I felt that I was, it wasn't for me. So my brother won the Golden Gloves per se. I'd feel as if, well, I lost, so I'm not as good, so this is not for me. It's learning that everyone has a different story. And when I learned that, I'm like, you know what? My story is supposed to inspire another kid in a different way, you know? And, and that, that was the biggest hurdle to me, Lose, learning that I lost, have to pick it back up, have to try again. I'm not perfect. I can get better and come back the next day. Sounds good. So you mentioned Evander Holyfield, so how did that come into play and how has it been having a legend of his stature in your corner? Um, having Evander Holyfield there is amazing because I remember I was about, I was feeling very down about boxing. You know, you get bad decisions sometimes, you'll beat a kid, they'll give it to the other kid. And uh, basically, uh, event, uh, event, I had my, my father brought to me a book on Evander. And the book was about how Evander didn't really do well in the amateurs like that. And, um, but somehow, like the last minute, he won a tournament and beat a kid that he couldn't beat before and made it to the Olympics. And uh, in the Olympics, he knocked everyone out except for the last guy. And, but he got a silver medal because he hit a guy when the bell rung at the same time. They basically cheated him. And, um, you know, so uh, sitting there knowing that he was a big reason why I continued to box and then learning that in the future God had it planned for me to be one of his protégés is amazing, you know? It's like, wow, like this all was written, you know? I could imagine. Okay. Yeah, coming up, coming up, yeah, coming up. All right, so I, I understand your sister right. boxes as well. Yeah. So my question to you is, how important is it to you that female athletes receive equal support and respect as their male counterparts? I think it's very important. I think it's very important that they have equal distractions, but they're the same, uh, that it's equally as hard for them. And you have a lot of phenomenal athletes uh, that are females, they need to be seen, you know? Because it's all about inspiring people and inspiring the next generation. 
to feel as if, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid and we all feel weak and, and helpless sometimes and, you know, waiting for God to let something fall on our lap. But when a young girl can say, oh, I don't, you know what, I can be like, uh, listen, I don't want to say anyone's name. I can be like this negative celebrity or I can be like an Aida Biggs, my sister. Or I could be like Clarissa Shields or Serena Williams. And if there's only uh, two or three positive female, you know, athletes, or females doing anything, they're like, oh, you know what, the, the chances of me being that is slim to none. But the more there are, it seems more realistic. You know? I grew around a lot of a lot of fighters, so I knew that it's realistic for me to go and become a boxer and do well. And I'm around nothing but world champions. You know? All right. It's just a bit of a sensitive one. So uh, depression has been, like, a major issue in our community oh, yeah. lately. So my question to you is, how do you keep it together? Like, how do you maintain your mental health and stay grounded? I went through a, a very tough part of my life, especially my father was uh, dying, died of cancer. I was very I was very down, but I just found the little muses throughout the day. You know, a lot of time we have to count our victories, even if though they're small victories. You know, I can look at myself, I was, at one point I was like, wow, I don't have any uh, electricity, I don't have any water, you know what I'm saying, in my house. I don't have any AC, it's hot. You know, in Florida, you know, I was doing B2B sales. So I was, I was, when I was very depressed. But then I said, you know what? Uh, in, in this time and age, me, an African American, I'm 20 something years old, I'm not supposed to be here. But I'm not in jail. You know, I have an opportunity. And if you were in jail, uh, I'm not in a third world country, you know, where there's, I hear bombs coming down or anything. You know, I can, I'm not, I'm, I'm alive. So you gotta just count those little victories throughout the day and, and pick yourself up and go and try hard. And say, I could change. Tomorrow is, a, as long as there's a tomorrow, it's like a reset button in a video game. It's like, okay, I lost, and I can go tomorrow and make something out of it. Definitely. You know? All right, so the last one's a bit of a haymaker. Okay. So tonight is game four. All right, the all right. So I gotta ask that question. <laughs> M&J or LeBron, who you got? I think, you know, I think they're, they're, they're different. Uh, the different positions, you know. Um, I mean, they're both great players. I mean, I look, I look at the the stats sometimes, and LeBron's breaking every stat, and then, but they're like, oh, MJ won more, you know, uh, you know, more rings and things like that. He's been, uh, LeBron's been to playoffs eight times, but he only has three rings. Um, his his career is not over, you know. So if we if we see how this ends, then I'll be able to really tell. But much respect to both guys, and you know maybe they maybe they're equal. I just feel you know I just feel like you know uh, Michael Jordan was just a little bit more clutch, you know. But then again, his team was constructed a lot better. And so, <laughs> <laughs> no. right, thank you so much.